Well, right now my home is a bit of a mess. If you can see here, this is all as a result of a water leak. And so now this is a real mess along the edges. It's a mess along the edges up there. And some things from other projects. It's been quite a rotten month. <laughs> it could be worse. But this lovely leak is a direct result of... Ugh, Sorry, this damage is due to a leak from my water heater, which goes under that area there. And so the water heater had to be replaced. And there's a lot of other things that have gone on this month. And I've been on my feet quite a bit today, so I have to kind of slow down a little bit right now I have some ground beef in the skillet and I have and some all rotten potatoes in that that's my new uh, oh gosh I can't think of what it is anyway that's for the water heater the new water heater I had to replace it I did replace it with a tankless water heater so that's going to be very helpful um, and keeping things <sighs> safer, I guess. Anyway, nonetheless. So the reason I'm actually doing this and starting this film is because I wanted to share as a result of this incredible financial slap across the face in the month of July from a propane leak that set off my CO alarm within the uh, well actually the alarm went off because of the propane leak which was really good because the CO levels were so high in here that I uh, if I had stayed in here any longer I wouldn't be making this or any other film so that was one of the challenges I normally don't like to try and film myself but this is just the only way that I can think of doing this right now um, there's been so much that's gone on. So, here I am in my little home and retired and on disability. And I know that there are many people out there um, that are doing this too. And, and it's not easy. And then when you have uh, financial challenges added to it, such as having the water heater... Sorry, I had to adjust that so that this would be a little bit better to see. So, now. So it started out with there being a leak. And, um, and, and so I, I didn't know at that time that, there, uh, that I had that alarm, which I'm glad that it was there. Um, and so I called my friend who works on... RVs and I explained to him I'm like do you hear this he goes yeah it's the LP um, LP okay he meant the propane and so I'm like okay he goes do you have anybody that can you know you can can you shut it off um, for me to go out the door down the stairs and out to the back and get over there um, I, where the propane tank is that would be very challenging. I'd have to get in my car and then drive over to the tank, which that's okay. I've done things like that before, but the way the tank is located, I wouldn't be able to get up there and turn it off. So I had to call the, uh, so I called the um, propane company, their automated system. This was happening on a Sunday afternoon. And so I had to um, end up calling the fire department. The fire department got here and I had to get out. The fire department on the phone told me to get out, which I did. And when they got here, they were looking around trying to figure out how to shut that alarm off. And they talked to my friend on the phone, which was really nice of him to do. And when they came in, they tested the CO levels and the CO levels were like one, 140. 
something just totally off the wall. I don't understand the, you know, the, um, the, the, uh, the measurements of the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Anyway, nonetheless, it was dangerously high and I could not come back in. They finally went and shut off the uh, propane and when they did about 10 minutes, within 5-10 minutes, it had totally shut off that alarm that just kept going and going and going. But I couldn't get back in. They kept measuring me um, to make sure that I was doing okay. I appreciate the fire department. They were very kind. Um, they asked if I wanted to go to the hospital. I didn't think that that was a necessity. Um, but they stayed with me for about two hours to make sure that the CO levels inside my little home were safe enough for me to come back into my home. And so I also had to leave windows um, open and have the fan so that they were blowing everything out. Then um, this, the propane company came out. They said, yeah, there's definitely a leak, but they don't fix it. They recommended somebody for me to call, and that's what I did. I called them, and a couple of days later, they came out. They couldn't find where the leak was. Um, so they stuck with it quite a while. But where the leak was, it was outside in a hose. And they said it was so tiny that you could have held a match up to it and it probably wouldn't have lit it. They wouldn't have done anything. But they did find it. Um, they ended up having to find it through squirting, um, you know, soap solution on it in order to be able to see where it was bubbling. But they found it and they fixed it. And they were very, very, very nice. I was so emotionally upset. And there were other things going on, of course, in my life just like with other people and then what they did was they um, looked around to find out well to see if there was somewhere else to see if there was a reason what was propane coming into the house somewhere somehow and the only thing that they found there was a gap that was by the water heater and initially everybody was thinking the water heater was there was something wrong with the water heater and that's why there was that leak but it turned out not but there was a gap where the water heater sits and uh, in, in that hole and right there right where the water heater was there was a gap so more than likely the co was coming into the house and it might have been coming in for a long time uh, from the exhaust of the water heater so uh, they, they, they kindly sealed that up, and, you know, which was good, and there wasn't any problems, and, and it seemed like everything was going to be okay. But a week later, I'm walking on the floor, and it's like, why is everything wet? And I'm seeing those marks that I had shown earlier in the film um, that showed that, you know, why is there water? And looked around, didn't see anything, couldn't find anything. And it was probably, oh gosh, five or seven days later when I just opened up the cavity where the water heater was and there was a, some water and it wasn't um, a lot, but it was very moist. I mean, there was probably maybe a half inch, quarter inch, half inch of water there. And so I called my friend um, and he came and he checked it. <coughs> this was on a Friday. Um, so, the, so you're talking about two weeks after the initial scare with the CO and the propane. And he said that the water heater would have to be replaced. And he shut it off, drained it so it wouldn't leak anymore, shut off the propane to it, and I had to go searching for a water heater. And I did get one off of Amazon. And um, it, it was reasonably a reasonable cost. It had a pretty good reputation. I had been looking at uh, tankless water heaters for a while here um, just because I wanted to be able to take a shower that lasted longer than five minutes. Um, <laughs> and anyway, nonetheless, that was hard hitting because the um, the propane company at first was going to charge me for the work, but they didn't. They took that off. 
but then the gas company that came in and fixed the leak and found the other uh, found the other thing they were kind i mean they just kept it the minimum charge which was 175 dollars when you don't have money 175 dollars is a lot of money but then what ended up happening was i had to get new tires and this was just after having just about a week before the leak i had um had the oil change done on my on my vehicle on my honda so those aren't inexpensive anymore either and the cost of everything has gotten so high then what happened was i had to get that um and it was delivered and actually it was pretty interesting i ordered it on a sunday and by tuesday the water heater was delivered that was very interesting i had to put it in the back of my car um, my friend who works on the RVs um, said that he would come back on Friday and we've gotten all kinds of rain and it's been so hot and so on. Well, that was hard. Um, that ended up being $840 basically. Um, so that was getting fixed. While that was getting fixed, I was having problems with the Honda. Okay, so now we've got oil change on the Honda. New tires on the Honda, that's $700. You know, less, a little under $700, $700. And then, now, the, the gauge, the temperature gauge was going up. I ended up having, I took it to my place. You, they've been working on my Honda ever since I've gotten it. And, um, and when we when I got there, that was the first time I'd ever seen the gauge. It was three quarters of the way up, which meant that it was definitely overheating. And it turns out that both fans were out. So now and that's another six hundred and fifty dollars, basically. Anyway, I, it, it, in a matter of a month, it ended up being um, just over twenty three hundred dollars that I had to put on my credit card. Okay, I don't have that kind of cash. I'm retired, I'm disabled. Um, I'm only retired because of the disability. Um, I'm, I'm retirement age, but I'm not full retirement age, but that doesn't matter. The problem is, is that when you don't have that kind of money, there's other things that happen. So, with some of the other funds and some things that I had done during the month to help somebody, um, it, it just ended up being incredibly ridiculous so now i have x amount of food in my house and i've determined i i i the the interest rate on um, the credit cards um, and the cost of the credit card on the interest on a monthly basis is way over my budget so i'm going to have to take and i'm already having to pay back the long-term disability which is crazy that that has to happen that's three thousand thirteen dollars and seventy five cents um anyway so a lot of money is going out and um i don't have that much coming in so i've come up with the challenge of finding many ways of being able to reduce my expenses um i had to cancel one uh, patreon thing i was supporting somebody it was only ten dollars a month but ten dollars a month adds up that's 120 dollars a year um every penny counts right so this is my challenge to myself and i'm going to share it with you and hopefully um, this might help somebody else um, i'm trying not to for an entire month buy any more groceries i'm just gonna stick with what i have now i had a couple of things on order and they're they're going to be coming but so it's going to leave me with um, some uh, some hamburger, some chicken breasts. Um, so I've got a pack of shrimp. I've got a few chicken breasts. Well, actually, one of the or things that are in the in the process of being delivered is more chicken breasts. Um, I have a few cod. I think I have four or five pieces of cod um, that are frozen and other things. And so I'm doing out everything I can not to spend any money on groceries other than what I might absolutely have to which would probably be like toilet paper but otherwise everything else I should pretty much have
and I want to share what I'm doing. So today what I'm doing is um, I am making, I'm taking a, a pound of ground beef and it's 80% lean and I'm going to ground that up. I'm going to add some onions to it and I'm going to add some scalloped potatoes to it. I've got some leftover um, vegetables, but there's only just a little bit. Um, and it was a can that I opened yesterday. I started this yesterday, actually. I didn't record anything yesterday. I'm still getting used to this, recording things and remembering to do this. And um, anyway, there's been a lot of things that have gone on. So, so it was tomatoes and okra and corn. And um, that's pretty good. I will add that. I did get some fresh broccoli. And um, so... So I'm going to have the, the, the ground beef and the scalloped potatoes. I'm cooking it on top of my stove. I haven't tried my oven yet. Um, I'm probably going to try that this month, and I'm going to be sharing that because it'll be uh, this is the first time I've used my oven. And um, so there's some things that I have here. Um, I, you know, I've, got, I've got one small container of milk, which is going to be fine for this um, uh, all rotten potato thing anyway so this is new to me um, I'm hoping I can share that with you at the same time as using only what I have in my home as far as food uh, for the month I also want to be very conscious of what I'm eating and the amount that I'm eating because I do not need to be gaining any weight and a lot of times when you're on a budget, most of the things that you have that are on a budget, um, in order to be able to get that feeling of satiety, whatever that word is, please forgive me, but to feel like you're full, sometimes those uh, foods are a little bit higher in um, cholesterol and sodium and all these other things and I'm going to be watching the amount so in this case I have the og rotten potatoes and so that's got to make at least four meals with the ground beef in it I will be adding some onions to it I will probably add garlic too because I like the taste of garlic but there's a lot of good health benefits with garlic and I've got four cloves two of which will be used for a um a, a mix that I found on YouTube with lemons and garlic and honey and make sure to have that every night it's good for the health heart it's good for the liver and all around good and just half a tablespoon of that a day I do need to make up a batch of it because it's got to sit for seven days from the time that you cut it up but I'm going to share some of these things that I'm doing I will try to do some filming um, I'm still learning about this. I only have my phone to film, and so it's hard for me to do this. I've just got to find a way because I think that this is really a cool thing to share, and who knows who it might help somebody else to be able to save some money on their groceries. Maybe they can do something worth what they have in their house and not buy any groceries for a month. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good day. I know it's like rambling on, but you take care.